we have a big opportunity today to deep dive into what had happened and what is about to happen in uh, one of the leading uh, Europe uh, ecosystem that is Germany. And we have the opportunity to talk. Uh, we have with us uh, Thomas Sottenberger. Thomas, uh, Thomas. Uh, Hello. Thomas, Thomas is a member of the German parliament. Uh, but is also a long prior experience uh, in working, in sitting in the board of uh, a lot of DAX companies like Deutsche Telekom and others. So I think one of the most striking points uh, with talking with Thomas that he knows both the corporate world and the political agenda. And I'd like before starting our conversation, Thomas, just to point out a couple of data that might be interesting also for properly positioning what is happening in Europe and what is happening in Germany. And then if you can look at the at this, uh, this data that are showing the, the trend of uh, scale up in Europe. You can get it. That one, perfect. This is coming. Um, so this is uh, what it happened in Europe the past 10 years. And so this is the number of scale-ups and this is the capital raised year over year. And then we see that before 2020, before 2010, nothing was there, substantially nothing. Then 2010, 2013, some initial progress. And then 2014, 2017, we have been uh, a big, big, uh, bump in terms of numbers and then starting 2018 the game moved to totally different uh, size and then uh, and this is Europe as a whole but then if we narrow down looking at the different countries we can see that the Europe uh, is scaling up yes but it's getting a different pace. go to the next slide we can see which is the capital invested in the different main countries uh, as an average in the last three years, 2018, 2020. And we can see there are substantially three speeds of action. There is UK that is playing probably in a league uh, on itself, is investing as an average about 12 billion per year in scale ups. Then we have Germany and France that are uh, currently investing uh, something north of 4 billion per year. That is a significant step up compared to the prior years. And then there is Southern Europe, and we have Spain investing 1.2 billion, and Italy investing 0 0.5 billion, so less than half than that. And so that's the, the current situation. So I think if we look at Germany, but that's it's now I want to, to definitely hear from you, Germany has being successful in moving the ecosystem to a certain size in terms of actions. I would like to get from you, Thomas, uh, what has been, in your opinion, the, the best uh, uh, political choices that has been done in order to support us such a progress? And then that would be the second part of our conversation. What's next, looking at Germany, in terms of what can be expected, also because there are some incoming elections that might substantially might be to change the future. So, Thomas, the floor is yours. Yes, thank you. Thank you so much, Alberto, and thanks for the invitation uh, to, to join you here. Um, I would like to add one thing to the scaling up. Yes, we are scaling up in terms of venture capital, not as good yet as the United Kingdom, but we are scaling up, but Germany is not scaling up in terms of number of startups and spin-offs. Uh, we are still on a historical low level uh, of having new founders uh, of, of businesses, and especially in the high-tech and deep-tech area. Uh, this is still a, a major uh, a, a major concern. So, so if if I look at at the country in the moment, I I say okay, venture capital is 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 flowing in. It's all be also being activated uh, uh, amongst uh, the the medium sized companies, the Mittelstand. Uh, but naturally, what we definitely need uh, is venture capital for deep tech, uh, for biotech, uh, for space. Um, 
for all kind of artificial intelligence. Uh, those are exactly for the those businesses, those startups who who don't have a very clear cut business plan yet, and where the su success is very much possibly in the future. Uh, that is number one, and I'm 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 happy to hear since about one or a half and two years that we are going to create a future fund in Germany. A public privately with, with uh, different risk classes, also a deep tech uh, classification, but it still needs to happen. Um, uh, secondly, what has going well uh, in the past, uh, probably uh, the, the whole issue of, of, op uh, of deregulating access of talent into Germany. Um, this this definitely has has improved. There is still a way to go. Um, still, the bureaucracy uh, when it comes then in 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 in, in local uh, in, in in local uh, decisions is still very tough. But in a general level, um, we are not yet with the Canadian immigration law, uh, but we are good going ahead. But naturally, uh, Germany in the moment and. And I'm heading the, the national STEM initiative, science, technology, engineering, and math. We have a, a, a brain gap of at least 100,000 data scientists uh, and, 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 and people uh, who, who are deep into artificial intelligence and, and robotics uh, and so on. Uh, not necessarily in, in our traditional industries, uh, 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 car and, and chemical products, but for the transformation of those yeah. uh, uh, critical industries, uh, but also for, uh, we, we already see a, 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 a brain s shortage in our startup ecos ecosystem. So, so the, the general framework has been improved, but on the other hand, we still have a significant skill gap. Um, and, yeah, just uh, just uh, just stopping here because I think you yeah. mentioned something that was very very important. Uh, you mentioned chemistry, automotive, the traditional industries that were that's been built up and has been successful based on totally different skills. And now the transformation that is already happening, by the way, requires totally different skill set, and uh, the the countries that will be able to. To, to bridge this gap in terms of talents, knowledge, will be the one that probably will be leading the scene rather than uh, the other that are not uh, enough uh, ability and skills and, and knowledge to be able to cover this gap. You mentioned 100,000 data scientists missing, also shortage in terms of this startup ecosystem to find developers to, to continue to, yeah. to improve the situation. I think this is our very, very common problems and the country will be definitely faster in uh, trying to to dressing and solving these gaps probably it will be the one that will be leading the scene well the world of machines is coming to an end uh, and and we are increasingly have the rise of cyber physical enterprises who create smart products and, and to be very clear cut on that South Korea is pretty good on that in the meantime. Not to talk about China, but comparable a country like South Korea. Uh, and and, and, and we, we still have, especially in the small and medium-sized uh, industry, uh, in the so-called Mittelstand, we, we still have a hesitation, uh, sometimes even a resistance uh, to transform. Um, and, and, and naturally, if, if, if you look, uh, if you look at the, the, the key, the key issues in the, in the cyber based platform economy, smart services, the Americans and the Chinese, uh, are far ahead, the Amazons and co. So, but, but Germany uh, has a strength in machinery. But now it has to come the transformation to cyber physical enterprises uh, and, and smart products. 
so that we can cope it with our deficiency in the in the in the B two C business at least that we are excellent in the B two B business. Now that that is a a, a a a key issue, and in here we we definitely we need more and more information technology, and and uh, unfortunately, given to Corona, the number of international uh, students who enroll uh, in, in information technology has gone down significantly. Um, so the, the and, and still, there is a consider, so considerable amount of those talents who stay in Germany or, or who who, play, who's, who stayed in Germany. Now we we, we nearly it went back by twenty to thirty percent. We have to regain that. And and number two, we have to be even more open as a country uh, for qualified immigration. Yes, and a point here is, uh, again, this is what it happened thus far that has been, I say, partially successful. There is a long road ahead. There are the incoming election, I think, in September in Germany. Yeah. How the outcomes of this election, based on your perspective, your long experience, might change, reshape uh, this evolution pattern, in which situation might definitely go faster, in which situation might be blocked, what are the potential different avenues that might be taken, depending on the outcomes of the election, based on your experience? Well, Germany uh, is a high-tech nation on the one hand, and on the other hand, a welfare state. And uh, the uh, in the moment, 54 percent of the national budget goes into the welfare state now and we we will we will take it with the election in september there will be a, a really clear decision will this go up to 60 percent means innovation economy which creates growth and jobs and perspectives for the people uh, will deteriorate, and um, let, let's let's be frank. Um, well, Sunday's election in one of our um, regional states in 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 in, in Saxony Anhalt uh, gave me again some confidence that it doesn't come to the worst. Uh, but till a few days ago, and we have still months ahead of, of us. Uh, it, it uh, a, a green red red coalition seemed possible and that that definitely means that that germany moves into a tax system like france had it in the times of president Hollande, uh, and that we we have an unconditional income uh, a, a massive investment only in regenerative technologies, no technological openness, and a demilitarization of Germany. That is very clear on the table. And, and I, I still, this, this fear from my point of view is still not being banned, that, that Germany really moves left. Um, now there is a, a medium uh we we call it usually it, like the traffic light uh, uh red green yellow um uh, social democrats the greens and and the liberals us but to also be very clear on that uh there are two partners from the worst scenario in there uh, so, and we, as a not, not the largest party in that coalition, we we would a lot have to fight to avoid the worst. Um, uh, it's it's kind of like scenario one, but with a minority party with a veto. And 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 uh, the third option, which which I personally favor, and which seems to become very reasonable after the weekend's election. Um, uh, which is called in our language Jamaica, uh, uh, black, the, the Christian Democrat 
the greens um, and 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 uh, yellow the the liberals where i see a clear reform agenda uh, really to 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 deal with the green deal to to make the green deal materialize into into real products and services and systems uh, for for daily life uh, but also for daily operation, for a steel operation, for example. Um, uh, those are the three options, and all three are still on the table and, and, and not unrealistic. So we'll definitely see, and uh, hopefully, again, we will. Uh, again, it's a complicated situation, and probably the yeah. pandemia has uh, changed the order of priorities. Obviously, empowering, uh, enlarging the welfare state is, is not a wrong choice, but it's something that comes with a cost, and the cost might be innovation in a certain, certain level. Yeah. And so, obviously, it's a trade-off because two things that are most of them are relevant, and probably now the sentiment of people is probably to, to try to protect themselves, also the cost of. Uh, reducing their ability of the, the country to be uh, performing in the future. And that is, that's the situation that I think most of the countries are currently living. And probably the pandemic has uh, reshaped the discussion towards the, the direction of uh, going a bit more protection, uh, more protection and less innovation. That is probably something that comes with a cost. Well, we, uh, Alberto, Natural. In in Europe, we are somehow uh, proud of our values of solidarity, and 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 uh, and, and social justice, and 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 we we, we do not want to copycat uh, the, the 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 U.S. Definitely the, not the Chinese way, um, and so, so we have to find to, to find uh, our our own way. Um, in, in, in regard in regard to, to that uh, but but this this means that we also have to define a social agenda for the digital era which is still lacking how do we deal with click work and crowd work how, how do we deal with the massive skill shift uh, which all of our nations will face uh, that is not just a, a, a German a challenge. Um, in, and uh, the, the lifelong learning issue, it's in all European nations on the table. And none of us really have found proper ways how to deal with a million skill shift. Uh, and, 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 and how we, how we also win the enterprises. Uh, for let's say for an ambidextrous solution on the one time drive the efficiency machinery in the moment but on the other hand invest in in people so, so, so that that needs so presence and future needs to be balanced in a in a new 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 way and politically incentivized probably uh, so working really on a realistic social agenda uh, on the one hand, and on the other hand, uh, we know the European paradox. We, we, we have in all of our countries a, a pretty good research and science, but we lack transfer when it comes to materialize in innovative products and services. So obviously the bridge from our research on to the street of, of creating business has to significantly be, be improved and and uh, and and this this both challenges uh, to master those two challenges that will create our so-called third way but if we fail we run the high risk of having a social darwinian digital capitalism Yeah, that's a good point. Again, this four-way that has been, uh, technically speaking, uh, since a while, uh, the, the 
potentially the, the German way of solving problems. And by the way, it worked pretty well in the past. Is something that currently looks uh, always far to reach and difficult to put um, on the road. And at the end, uh, we remain in between. And this in between today might have uh, very, very complicated consequences. Just to come to the end of our conversation, a couple of uh, short uh, questions. Uh, first of all, you mentioned that 10 billion uh, public-private fund uh, focus on deep tech, uh, but you also mentioned that it's still to come. Uh, what are your, what's your forecast there? Because it might be something that may be a game changer. And so... Uh, if we have uh, scenario one, it won't come. If we have scenario two, it won't come. If we have scenario three, it will come. Okay, pretty, pretty clear answer. Yeah, there are another things that I remember from our, our prior conversation. Uh, you, you mentioned the excitation, the resistance of the German companies to open up to, to digital innovation, particularly from the Mittelstand. Uh, but you also mentioned that startups might be the way to, to melt these two, these two worlds, also bringing digital competencies, mostly through small acquisition, also through working together, uh, how do you believe that is maybe doable, given knowing also the German culture? Um, yes. Uh, and and I, I just read a survey, well, you always don't know really what's being measured, uh, but it says that, that roughly one third uh, of German middle stand is, is in the meantime uh, uh, cooperating uh, with, the, with, with, the, with the startup um, ecosystem. Now we don't know what means cooperation, yeah. uh, but but definitely uh, there there is a it's we we had a time where, where we talked about eight to ten percent. Uh, it was two years ago, uh, but obviously Corona um, uh, Corona showed that there is no way out of a low touch economy, and this means a digital economy. Uh, so, given the, the the crisis, obviously helped. Um, but but on the but on the other hand, you you you, you talk naturally. The Mittelstand in Germany is extremely distributed in the rural areas uh, and in the in the provinces. It's not like the Isle de France uh, uh, in, in, in let's say two or three really hot spots. Uh, but it's uh, so it's it's a hard time really to to get startups in those small and medium-sized cities where very many of them of the so-called mittelstand companies uh, uh operate so, so there is a key issue to to create co-working spaces attractive working conditions uh for not only uh, startups uh, who, who perhaps then join the, 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 the established team for two or three days a week, but also for the digital freelancers, uh, which are definitely needed to digitize the processes. Uh, and and um, but, but this means kind of a modern, a modern working culture also uh, in the rural areas. Um, we all know uh, the old word of Richard Florida uh, about the attractiveness uh, of, of, of regions. Um, it's technology, talent, and, and, and tolerance. It's accepting that the lifestyle of a, of a nerd uh, is, is different than the lifestyle of an uh, uh, of, of a, a electrical engineer. Uh, who has uh, coming from a local uh, from a local university? So in this, really, those dealing with those culture issues, uh, bringing the two worlds together, also in the way the working culture, the leadership culture, is is still some uh, challenge uh, which is remaining. Yes. Yes, very, very, very good. Let me end our conversation with uh, something that I think is revealing a lot about you. I think uh, you have become in a short period of time a TikTok star with under the thousands of people following. That means a lot that you, you have your ability to open to new things, yeah. test 
And uh, how did you make it? Because I think it was amazing. You know, we, uh, I was I was 40 years uh, in management, uh, 20 years in top management positions, and we top managers usually believe everybody has to transform except us ourselves. Uh, and uh, I, I tried a little bit when I was still active in, 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 in business to, to cope that. Uh, uh, but, but actually, TikTok means you have to let loose and to give in. And, and, and really, it's, it's an application which is based on, on music, on rhythm, on movement, uh, 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 songs, and very selected, very dosed political messages. So you, you, you cannot like a politician, you know, give your traditional speeches in your propaganda. No, this does not work. You have to be authentic. You have to let yourself in. I, I even did my first dance uh, pu publicly in, a, in one of the TikToks. Uh, and, 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 and so people, the young people like me. Uh, and, and, and I have now 130,000 followers and uh, the next politician has 40,000. Um, and, and then most of them don't even have the courage to go there. And, and now let's be honest. TikTok has in Germany 11 million followers. Six million are over 18 and are in an age where they elect in September. So we need to go there where the future generation goes to. Despite that we care for all generations, but we, we, we really need to care for the young ones. And we need to have people. a communication channel open with them. And uh, again, kudos, because I think that what you have done is another uh, example of your, your mind openness. And uh, I really enjoy the ability to, to share insights with you on prior occasion and today publicly. And so all the best for the incoming elections and uh, let's keep up our conversation channel open because we have a lot to learn from you thank you thomas thank you alberto have a good conference thank you